Recently I've made a series of episodes concerning optical phenomena. As you can see, I really love this topic because we discuss about things that we all see, we all experience. I've decided to talk about interesting optical phenomena, like why the sun and the clouds and the moon appear red in sunrise and sunset, why the clouds appear white when it is midday, and why they seem dark grey when it is about to rain. As you can see from the title of this video, today we're going to talk about why the sky appears blue. Ish. Anyway, if this is the case, it is not the only case, as I've decided to make a slightly different video from the others, making a compilation of optical phenomena that are very interesting and we all experience them in our everyday lives. So with no further ado, let's get started. Optical phenomena are made because of light. So let's start from this. Light travels through space in gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet, the visible spectrum, infrared, microwaves and radio waves. First wavelengths to lose are gamma and X-rays. Those wavelengths are so short that cannot penetrate the atmosphere and thus are reflected back into space. Let's zoom to the upper part of the atmosphere. Those reflections are responsible for aurora, aka northern lights. More on that later. Longer wavelengths eventually penetrate the ozone layer, which is the upper part of the atmosphere. And there the magic is done. The atmosphere operates like a prism. So, as you can see, white light hits the surface of the disk, but it reflects colored. This is known as the visible spectrum. Shorter wavelengths of the visible spectrum are scattered in the upper part of the atmosphere because they hit particles with a diameter bigger than their own wavelength. So they endlessly bounce from particle to particle, making the sky blue. And believe me, there is a lot of particles out there. But those scattered wavelengths are not only blue, they are also purple and indigo. But why is not the sky a combination of these three colors? That is because blue color has a dominant share of the visible spectrum. So only green, yellow and red lights hit the surface directly. Rayleigh scattering was discovered by the British physicist John William Statt, but for nobility reasons he was known as Lord Rayleigh. This scattering results from the electric polarizability of the particles. The oscillating electric field of a light wave acts at the charges within a particle causing them to move at the same frequency. The particle therefore becomes a small radiating dipole. It can occur when light travels through transparent solids or liquids, but it is mostly observed in gases. What about other planets? The sky here on Earth appears blue, but if the atmosphere layer was thinner, the sky would be dark blue. If it was thicker, it would appear white. So the look of the sky is dependent from the atmosphere's thickness and density. Exoplanets with the same atmosphere composition and thickness will have blue skies as well. On Mars, for example, the atmosphere consists mostly of carbon dioxide and thus the sky appears white when it is dense with dust. When the atmosphere is thinner, longer wavelengths scatter, giving a reddish color. On the Moon, the sky is black because there is no atmosphere and thus no scattering occurs. The Sun is not as yellow as it appears. Another result of the Rayleigh scattering is that the Sun seems yellow. This is because only yellow, green and red light hit our eyeballs directly, and so the yellow color. If the weather is very hazy, then the sun appears white, because all colors diffuse equally. But if you go beside the Hubble telescope, or anywhere in space, you will notice that the sun is white, because no scattering occurs. Oh, and do not get confused with these illustrations from NASA telescopes. These are false color images. They are either synthetic making the sun appear yellow, or they are photos taken through green filters. This is done because we are more familiar with the yellow sun. Rainbows A rainbow has the same properties as a prism. Replace the prism with water droplets in the atmosphere, and guess what? You have a rainbow. But there are some conditions to take into account. In order to see one, there must be a lot of water droplets in the air. This mostly happens after rain. Then you need to be positioned, having the sun behind you and the droplets in front of you. So let's take a microscopic look at this phenomenon. When light hits a droplet, a large amount refracts and a small amount is reflected. Remember the prism. When light enters a different medium, it slows down, and different wavelengths reflect in different angles. 
Let's take a first-person view of this phenomenon. But you will be able to see this phenomenon only if the ray of light makes a 42 degree with a droplet and your eyeballs. Now, if you connect all those droplets that make a 42 degree with your eyes, will make a rainbow. Fun fact, if you go up high with the same atmospheric conditions, you will see an extended rainbow making a circle. So, a rain circle? If you are lucky enough, a second refraction will occur at 53 degrees and then you will have a double rainbow. Floating water Early in the morning, spider webs can create some amazing floating water illusions as morning dew or droplets stick on the web. The sun is low enough for us to see only the water droplets. Green flash Sometimes occurring right before sunrise or just after sunset, a green spot will appear just above the horizon. Although they are caused by a variety of factors, in general the explanation is that light is being bent in the atmosphere. When an astronomical object like the Moon and the Sun set on the horizon, the atmosphere acts like a prism, as it separates different wavelengths of light. When a lot of dust and smog is present in the atmosphere, you can see the Sun having a green upper rim, while the lower rim is red. In rare occasions, this ring can appear bluish or violet. Interesting fact is that the Richard Evelyn Beard Antarctic Expedition reported seeing the green flash lasting for 35 minutes in 1934. This is explained because the sun never really sets in summer at the North Pole. Aurora Borealis In the Northern Hemisphere, this is known as Aurora Borealis, while in the Southern Hemisphere, this phenomenon is called Aurora Australis. These are caused by magnetic rays and solar winds interacting with the upper layer of the atmosphere. The Tyndall effect The eye has a color due to the Tyndall effect, aka Willis Tyndall scattering. John Tyndall in 1859 discovered that when light passes through a clear fluid holding small particles in suspension, the shorter blue wavelengths are scattered more strongly than the red. It is similar to Rayleigh scattering, in that the intensity of the scattered light is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength, so blue light is scattered much more strongly than red light. Shining a flashlight beam into a glass of milk is an excellent demonstration of the Tyndall effect. You might want to dilute it with water so you can see the effect on the colored particles of the light beam. Another everyday example is the motorcycle with two-stroke engine. The fuel fluids make a nice Tyndall effect with blue smoke coming out of the exhausts. A blue iris in the eye is due to Tyndall scattering in a translucent layer of the iris. Green eyes have the same conditions with a bit more melanin which absorbs light. Brown and black irises have the same layer except with much more melanin in it. Halos A halo, also known as a nimbus, is an optical phenomenon produced by the interaction of light from the Sun or Moon with ice crystals in the atmosphere, resulting in colored or white arcs, rings or spots in the sky. They can also form around artificial lights in very cold weather when ice crystals called diamond dust are floating in the nearby air. Sun dogs are a common type of halo, with the appearance of two subtly colored bright spots to the left and right of the Sun, at a distance of about 22 degrees and at the same elevation above the horizon. They are commonly caused by plate-shaped hexagonal ice crystals. These crystals tend to become horizontally aligned as they sink through the air, causing them to refract sunlight to the left and right, resulting in the two sun dogs. Sun pillar This is an atmospheric optical phenomenon in which a vertical beam of light appears to extend above or below a light source. This phenomenon can be caused by the sun, the moon or even by street lights. These also belong to the family of halos. It is created by the reflection of light from tiny ice crystals that are suspended in the atmosphere. You can find detailed information of all these phenomena down in the video's description. We could discuss about many, many other optical phenomena, but let's wrap things up for today. Did they miss your favorite optical phenomenon? Let me know in the comment section, and who knows, I probably make a part 2 of this episode. Let me know whether you disliked or liked this video. If you did, you can subscribe to my channel. And if videos are not enough, you can follow my social media for more daily science facts. Thanks for watching.